Good evening, Fernwood. It is your summer vacationing friend, Neil, here, and it's time for us to enter that theme park full of emotional roller coasters that we call Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. We are starting rerun week, which means that if you are returning to us, that, hey, we're going to cover some of the episodes that we didn't record so well, maybe in that first 60 episodes. I've picked two weeks worth of episodes that I think are really interesting and and worth discussing. If you're new to this, then hey, today is a good day to be here because we're starting with episode one, which means everyone's on the ground floor of this very odd soap opera experience. It is satirical, it is raw at times, but it is really fulfilling. I found it very interesting to be here, to say the least, over the last 26 weeks. We're doing two weeks of reruns because I don't want to do 13 weeks of reruns. I want to get to season two eventually, but I've spent the last 26 weeks watching every single episode, five episodes a week of this show. And, you know, I I feel like there's quite a lot to talk about. The show is very much ahead of its time, and maybe it's time to just start it so you can see what the heck I'm talking about. possibly be to each other with you in jail and me on crutches we'll be back with more of our story tomorrow oh that joan she is so wonderful no matter what happens to her She's so marvelous. I love her. I wonder how come her hair is always in place. Have you ever noticed there's never one strand out of line? How do you like the floor? See that glow? Do do you mean the waxy yellow buildup? What do you mean? There can't be a waxy yellow buildup. Read the can. Mary, you're looking at a waxy yellow buildup. No, I'm not. I am looking at a label that says that can't be. Mary, I am your sister. And I'm telling you, it's not a waxy buildup there. It's a waxy buildup there. You know, these people, I mean, they turn out about a million cans a week. I mean, who am I supposed to listen to, you? Waxy yellow buildup. It is a little yellow, isn't it? It certainly is. Anyway, that's not what's really bothering you, is it? Kathy, I wonder what all those sirens are. You think someone got murdered on the next block. It's Tom. Come on, Mary, how are things between you and Tom? They're fine. Four sirens. Would you never mind the sirens? Tell me what about your marriage? Look, Kathy, there really is something that I have to talk to you about. Lord, Mary, you're not going to believe what happened. I'm out of shape. I'm pooped, and I only came from next door. Hi, Kathy. Sorry to barge in. What happened? There was a mass murder on the next block. You mean somebody told you before me. Oh, come on, Loretta. It's a terrible joke. Who's joking over on Mary Jane Street? Mary June. Oh, wait a minute. You mean Mary Jean with Forbes goes No, no, Mary Jean's a crush town. Mary Jean's Whatever. Couple. Anyway, the point is, I was rehearsing some tunes from a nightclub act when all of a sudden Joyce Cutler comes over pounding on my door. Mm-hmm. Well, she's pregnant, you know, and I thought it was her time. She's only six months pregnant. No, I wasn't thinking. Anyway, she says to me, and I remember her very words just like it was five minutes ago, which it was. She says, Loretta. You want some sugar in there? No. She says, Loretta, something terrible's happened over on Mary Jane Street. Mary Jean. Mary June. Oh, whatever. Anyway, she says, you know that new family over there, the Lombardis? And I said, well, no, I hadn't met them yet. She says, well, you should have met them while you had the chance because they're gone now. Somebody just shot them all. 
Oh, my God. The whole family? All five of them, plus two goats and eight chickens. I can't believe that. What kind of a madman would shoot two goats and eight chickens? And the people. The people, of course. I know. Whew. Gives me the shivers. Kathy, want some fresh coffee? Yes. Now, you said Joyce Cutler told you this, right? Wasn't she the one who saw the flying saucers in the Safeway parking lot? See, I thought those sirens were fire engines. What are you taking this? Nothing. All right. Are you kidding? Those were ambulances. If those people were murdered, why would they need ambulances? Well, Lord, honey, what you think they's going to take them away in a pickup truck? Oh, I'm sorry. Ain't that awful? Oh, it's all awful. It's just awful. I wonder if I should have some coffee. What are we going to do if there's some maniac running loose shooting people and chickens? Lord! I think I will. I wish you would calm down because you're getting me scared. Oh, for goodness sake, girls, let's not get hysterical. It's not as if some madman's going to break in the back door any minute. Shh! Did y'all hear something? Oh, Loretta. Shh! Does yours taste bitter? Shh! Lord! Don't answer it. Mary, don't. It's a policeman or something. He's holding up a card. He's a reporter. Hi, uh, I'm Fer uh, Harold Clemens with the uh, Fernwood Courier. Oh, come right in. Ah, thanks. Gee, I'm uh, sorry about the noise. Hope I didn't frighten you. I guess you heard about what happened over on Mary June Street. Mary Jean. Mary June. See, I told you. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, did any of you know the Lombardis? Let me get you some coffee. Oh, All right. <laughs> Thanks. Boy, talk about your lucky breaks. I was in the neighborhood covering the Fernwood Flasher when all of a sudden, blam, 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 I get involved in this mass murder. Fernwood Flasher? Yeah, some old guy who goes around exposing himself. You know, bing bong. <laughs> Forget about that. Like I say, I'm covering the Flasher when all of a sudden I fall into an honest-to-God mass murder. Oh, I just can't believe it. I used to always go shopping with Ms. Lombardi over at Federated. All right, uh, gee, I'm sorry. I didn't uh, mean to upset uh, Mrs. Lombardi's friend. Oh, I'll come back later. Oh, no, don't go. Uh, could I ask you one question before you leave? Sure. Uh, you've never been here before. No. <laughs> Do you see any waxy yellow buildup on that floor? Looks fine to me. Well, you know that Tammy line that she just gets better and better with every record, you know that? Well, we've heard it, Charlie. I mean, we've heard it, you know? Well, of course you heard it. It's one of her biggest hits. You know, when that was only up a week and a half, it was already number 19 in cash box with a bullet. So? So it means it was a hit. My Loretta sings twice as good as she does, and she writes her all her own songs. She's going to be a big star someday. You'll see. You really believe that, don't you? Yeah. You know who else believes it? It's your wife. Mary believes it. I tell you, when we make that demonstration record and we play it for those guys in Nashville, that's going to be it. Well, you really got something going with that red of yours, don't you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Charlie. Listen, let me ask you a question. Huh? About the music business? No, 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 about you and Loretta. I mean, um, look, on the average, how often do you... Hmm? Oh, you mean, uh, how many times a week do we, uh... Yeah. How often? Five or six times a week. Come on, come on, really. No, I mean, that's not a number one week with a bullet in it, but you just said average. Five or six times. I mean, I'm not as young as you are, Tom. Yeah. I mean, you and Mary, you got several years on me. And Jackie's playing in a discotheque to a brand new dance. dance. And the White House. We interrupt our music program to bring you this special bulletin. Fernwood police have been joined by several state of Ohio law officers in the investigation of the mass murder of five people and the slaughter of their goats and chickens. The chickens and goats suffered multiple contusions in a Come on, not while I'm eating, huh? Charlie, did you hear what just happened? Turn on the radio. Oh, now, come on, on now, George. Your son-in-law can take it, but I can't. 
Listen, Charlie, I'm not talking about the Fernwood flashes. I know, I know, you know, you're talking about the mass murder. We just heard all about it. But the details can wait. I mean, this is a pimento loaf sandwich I'm eating here. What do you got, Tom? Chicken wings. What's with you guys? Five people dying already, and you're talking about chicken wings. Jeez, they killed the chickens, too. Five people, Charlie. And do you know who they were? Buck Lombardi, his wife, and three kids. That's who. That somebody we know? The new guy on the line. Lombardi? Lombardi. Ain't that awful? Oh, my God. I didn't know he kept goats and chickens. Now, how can somebody do something like that? A nice guy like that? Wow. Do they know who did it? No suspects, no reasons. But a strange duck, that Lombardi. You notice how he used to always stay by himself? Yeah. And now you find out that he was raising goats. That's strange. Yeah, the only time I ever saw him was on overtime. He had a Zenith portable with two speakers. You should hear Jeannie C. Riley on two speakers. Strange guy. ACDC. The radio, you could plug it in or play it on a battery. It's a great sound. Charlie, a guy gets murdered and all he can talk about is the radio. I mean, that technical stuff is important, Tom. You should hear Loretta. Loretta would sound great on two speakers. Goats. Hmm. And that's why I'm saving up all this money. So we can get real good engineers and the best musicians for the demonstration record. Chickens. Well, Mary believes in her. Mary says she's going to be a superstar. I, that reminds me, Tom. Has Mary been feeling all right lately? Yeah, what, what makes you ask that? Why? Because she happens to be my daughter, that's why. Come on, you're not going to pull father-in-law on me, huh? No, but her mother asked me to ask you. It seems that she thinks that Mary is worried about something. I haven't noticed it. Yeah? Yeah. And maybe it was uh, Martha's imagination? Yeah? Insert cartridge bullet hmm. in the chamber. Closed chamber. Extend weapon at full arm's length with both hands and... <gasps> what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> What's the gun for? What? Uh, it's for protection. I mean, I wouldn't want what happened to Lombardi today to happen to my family. Is it loaded? Well, sure, of course. Wouldn't be much help if it was loaded now, would it? Huh? It's not liable to go off or anything, <laughs> what? is it? You're going to leave it there if it was? I don't know. I'm not trying to put my family in danger. I'm trying to protect my family. Why? Why what? Why are you trying to protect your family? I'm trying to protect my family because <laughs> I love my family. That's why. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> what are you doing? Nothing. Cut it out. Come on, I want to read. Cut it out. Cut it out. There's no law against her making love, you know. We're married. I know. We have a license. Okay, okay, okay. So then what's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong with it. When I feel like making love to you, I'll make love to you. It's been five weeks, Tom. You mean you haven't felt like it in five weeks? It hasn't been five weeks. I don't appeal to you anymore. Don't be silly. That's ridiculous. All I'm asking is why you haven't... Okay, you want to know? Anything. You want to know? Huh? I'm yeah. going to tell you. All right, I'll tell you. Okay. Because every time I feel like doing something, you do it first. That's why. So? It kills everything. What? It makes me feel like not doing anything. You mean because I do it instead of you doing it? Yeah, that's it. That's it exactly. Exactly. What difference does it make who does it first? That's not the way it's supposed to be. I mean, the lion in the jungle, when he shakes his man... Wait a minute. See... I read an article in Reader's Digest, and it said that things are very different nowadays. And I, I don't different... care what Reader's Digest says. Now, you want to make love to Reader's Digest, you go find the guy who wrote the article, and you make love to him. What am I supposed to do if I want to make love to my husband? Nothing. Nothing? 
That's right. And when I feel like doing it, I'll do it. And when will that be? When I tell you, that's when. Now, look, all I'm saying is you want to express those urges, you wait. And when I'm ready, you, and if you leave me alone, I'll be ready. And then you can express them till you come apart. Meanwhile, act like a woman. And do nothing? That's right, stay put. And then when I feel like doing it, I'll do it. But I don't feel like doing it when you're doing it. Good night. Honey? Yeah, honey? Charlie, if you could have anything in the whole wide world that you wanted for breakfast, what would you have? Because I'm going to get up from here and fix you the greatest breakfast. Well, bacon and eggs will be fine. You sure you wouldn't like some hickory smoked sausage or some light fluffy pancakes or hot buttered biscuits or oatmeal or sausage or... <laughs> Bacon and eggs will be fine. And a hug and a kiss. Mm. Honey, are you sure you're not sorry? Sorry about what, baby boy? Baby boy. Are you sure you're not sorry you married me? Me being 43 and all. And me being 22 and all. Oh, Charlie, how could I be sorry? I love you. Anyway, I was the one that asked you to marry me, remember? And he said yes before he even knew I could sing. Otherwise, I'd think he's marry me for all the money I'm going to make. Oh, Charlie, you're just my big old baby boy. Loretta, if you aren't the cutest, sweetest thing that ever happened to a bald man, I don't know what is. Hell, it's no wonder I'm working my butt off for you. If I have to kill myself, we're going to get that $510. And you are going to make that demonstration record, and we're going to play it for those big shots in Nashville, and you are going to be a star. Which, by the way, I almost got the money already. So you just get your... I love you. Well, I love you too, honey. In case I didn't get that message across. Okay. One first class breakfast coming up, just like at the pancake house, with the best pot of coffee you ever had. Mm. Mm -mm. Doesn't taste like coffee to me. Oh, Charlie! Charlie Hagers, you are terrible. Just terrible! <laughs> oh, honey. That reminds me. I'm going to load up the shotgun before I take off. You know, on account of what's been happening in the neighborhood and all, I want you to keep it handy. You know? I mean, just in case. I love you, baby boy. Tom, I'm afraid that there's a slight problem with breakfast. Uh, that's okay, honey. I'm, I'll get some coffee at the plant, and I'll see you tonight, okay? Okay. before you have to go to work? Forget I said that.
I'm, uh... Listen, I'm really in a... What's the matter? Who died? Who's that? Ma, you don't even know her. Well, I think it is the point. Listen, Ma, I really gotta go now. I'll speak to you later. Ma, I told you I'm very busy right now. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Hartman? Yes? This is Sergeant Foley at the Fernwood Police Station. The police station? Uh, Larkin gave us your number after we were unable to reach anyone at his home number. Grandpa Larkin's at the police station? Yes, he is. Is he all right? Well, not exactly. Was he hurt? I mean, what, did he have an accident? Uh, no, he's not hurt. And what happened, I'm afraid, was not an accident. I don't know what you mean. Well, I'm afraid he did it deliberately. That's why he was arrested. What was he arrested for? Indecent exposure. Indecent exposure? That's right. I'm afraid, Mrs. Hartman, your grandfather is the Fernwood Flasher. Listen, uh, um, I can't talk now. I I'm on the phone. Mrs. Hartman? Mrs. Hartman? Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Uh, I'm Mary Hartman. Mary Hartman. Good morning. I'm here about my grandfather. Uh, he's been arrested. And you're here to get him out. Yeah, Is that right. it? Could I see him, please? I'll fight this thing right up to the Supreme Court. I'm innocent. Sure you are. Just tell me one thing. Oh, the old third degree, huh? Okay, go ahead. But I'm not talking. Just incredible. Fernwood Flasher. Mass murders. Goats. Chickens. My floor is yellow. Flashing? What was he flashing? <laughs> oh, beautiful. Beautiful. That's... <laughs> Just beautiful. Uh, uh, now, now uh, you know, and she knows, and he knows. Now, tell me. Is there any peanut butter? So there we are. Episode one of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, which I watched 26 weeks ago. I had seen it maybe a decade before that because I had the first DVD set, but hey... I kind of really only got to know the show in the last several months. So in this episode, we see all of the key players. We see Tom and Mary and Loretta and Charlie. Those are sort of the big characters that start out this show. We meet Kathy and we meet George. And uh, so we get to see how these families work together. And I... Uh, Normally, normally I will skip all of the future episode stuff, but, you know, today we covered some stuff that I'm not going to get to real quick. So, um, you know, we're getting to see these dynamics, and there's so much going on in this show. We have Tom and Mary, who I always feel like they really love each other, but that they have very deep problems. So this is where we talk about the show, if you're new to us today, hey, I'm going to talk about the show. Uh, I'll try not to spoil anything, but, you know, things that I have observed over the last several months, 
you know, they resonate a little differently when I watched this first episode. I think I caught them the first time, but hey, now that I've, I've been a little ways, I catch them even more. So Mary is the quintessential housewife. She really is guided by how clean can she make the floors, and she's obsessed with the waxy yellow buildup to the extent that it really seems almost like an existential experience for her. Tom, on the other hand, is... You know, what I notice here is that he is verbally curious about his sexual inadequacy. And, and I'm not trying to spoil anything here, but Tom's sexual inadequacy is a major part of the first arc of this show, although it is never verbally described. It's always implied. So the level of implication that we caught today, it gets a little bit more nailed on the head, but uh, you will never hear the word impotence here. You will never hear sexual inadequacy. You know, that's not, that. apparently that was what they were addressing though. But we can see Tom compare, comparing himself to Charlie. And Charlie and Loretta, they do it like bunnies. They, they're at, and you know, not five to six times a week is not bunnies necessarily, but you know, uh, they're fairly active and very affectionate, uh, Loretta and Charlie. But Tom, he, he seems intimidated by that. He seems like you're crazy to think of five, six times a week. So one of the essential problems that Tom and Mary have is that they have and they have many problems, but one of the essential problems that Tom and Mary have is that they have a, a difference in sexual want in their relationship. So Mary is wanting affection and Tom is feeling, you know, he's feeling what many people who go through erectile dysfunction do, which is a rich array of emotions that have to do with embarrassment or inadequacy. and. I don't appreciate the way that Tom spoke to Mary in this episode by saying, hey, when I want sex, that's when you're going to get it, because that's not really good partnership. In the mid-70s, I don't really feel like that kind of conversation was happening in the public sphere. Yes, there had been sex researchers looking at impotence and uh, since like the 50s, you know. Masters and Johnson were doing lots of lots of research on the subject to simplify maybe a little too much but simply to say hey you're going to get sex when I want to have sex is that that would be a deal breaker if they weren't already married that would be a deal breaker before they are married so it becomes more complicated but Mary clearly wants sexual attention in the relationship and Tom I think Tom may appreciate that but also he is feeling all of the feelings of impotence and that is one of the one of the relationship hurdles that they are having to navigate Loretta and Charlie, they have no problem with the sex. And, you know, it's, it's implied that they are at it quite a lot. And a major storyline for, for Loretta is getting the money to have a recording session to create a demo tape. So that's a big deal. We have a few other storylines pop up, like the Fernwood Flasher, who, as we saw, is Grandpa Larkin who we see in the after scenes uh, of coming up next scenes. He's a character. And we hear of the murder of the Lombardis and their five goats and two chickens. Or is it five, two, I forget. I forgot already how many goats and chickens there are, but 
it when you see it in the series they repeat it quite a lot it becomes kind of a running gag for a while but the Lombardi murder is pretty horrible so that is what's going on we are not going to go straight to tomorrow's episode so if you want to watch that well there are places you can find it uh, I want to do this for rerun season these two weeks every day of these two weeks I want to spotlight some shows that I am enjoying that are not Mary Hartman Mary Hartman many of which deal with things I feel that Mary Hartman touched upon in its 45 years ago run so what I'm gonna do today I want to talk about a show that I really loved and it's complete the show is available to watch all the way through at this point and that is a show called crazy ex-girlfriend which was created by Rachel Bloom a comedic songwriter and an all-around funny lady who creates a show about a main character played by her named Rebecca Bunch who is a high-powered New York lawyer who moves to a Southern California suburb for questionable reason and I feel like it plays with a lot of a lot of the things that Mary Hartman was just starting to scratch on and I think you know modern shows that deal with mental health boy you know they've come quite a ways since then I think Mary Hart I still think Mary Hartman Mary Hartman is ahead of its time there are complaints I may have about it from a modern point of view in terms of various things but hey you got to start somewhere so for those of you who are curious about crazy ex-girlfriend I'm going to leave a card right up here check it out you can see a preview of the first season and maybe get yourself watching the show I believe it's all on Netflix to watch so hey that was day one of rerun week that was episode one of Mary Hartman Mary Hartman January 5th 1976 next episode tomorrow we're gonna jump into week two of the series I'm not telling you which episode just yet so you'll have to come back to find out thank you for being here thank you for entering this theme park and taking that first step onto an emotional roller coaster or two we will see you tomorrow night in Fernwood